Greetings, dear ones. I'm crying of magnetic service. Hmm. I pause to allow the love of God in this room to manifest itself in a way greater than I thought you would allow it to. For humans possess that which is free choice that surprises even the creative energy. A choice of allowance. The allowance to think past a reality that you think you understand. The meetings that I have been at through the courtesy of the humans who show up in anticipation of my visit <laughs> have contained old souls. This was foreseen. The meetings when my partner began contained curious souls. It has evolved. It is the seriousness of the old soul that brings them to a room like this or to a place where they can listen like this or in the case where they can read this. Spirit is about potentials on my side of the veil. Again I say there is no clock. We see the reader in the same way we see the one in the chair today. We see the potential that may have brought you to the place where you will have opened the article. Or the place where you can read, whether it be on paper or on an electronic device. And that is the same time as you in the meeting. For we do not see empirical rules in our reality, but potentialities of existence. All that to say is we know who you are. Listening, reading, in the chair. You think you know how many are here, and you don't know what here means. Far more. And so we wish to continue that which we told you this morning we would do. A continuation of the message of the new energy on the planet. The halfway of the 36 year alignment. That is what we would call the galactic alignment. And this year being the middle being the one where the energy starts to shift, starts to shift, and the seeds begin to be planted that will change this planet from here forward. You're only planning it. And so you're seeing what are some cases dramatic change and others no change. But I tell you this, all will change eventually. And it is the way of it that it would be slower than not. The slowness of change is due to generations of human beings inheriting, you might say, new consciousness. It also allows for those who have been born in an old energy to exhaust that old energy in what you would call an incarnation or an expression through what you would then also call death, which to us is simply rejuvenation into life. If this didn't make any sense to you, I will then tell you what my partner says should have been the words all along. <laughs> the old energy dies hard. And there are a lot of humans who will have to go through death in order to be reborn into a new energy, in order to accomplish the things they came for. Now the old soul is prepared and ready for consciousness shift in the body they're in and the time frame they're in far, far better than any other human being on the planet. This simply means that time must go by 
in order for you to see the things that we talk about. But as these generations occur, you will start to see, even before they occur, the seeds of change. And that is what we discussed today, and we're going to call this the recalibration of free choice. Here is a concept we have not discussed before. I want to launch into the teaching. My partner is pushing me. He says, you're late. I don't have a clock. I don't care. <laughs> I want to sit here and love you for a minute, if that's all right. I want to tell you, human being, you've arrived at the right time to sit in this chair. There is a dispensation at this moment, no matter what the teaching is, no matter what the words are. Listen, reader, I know who you are. There's a dispensation right here for you. Before you get up out of the chair where you are, that you'll be different. Because you will receive an energy that is being broadcast no matter what time you think it is. Into the very DNA of your soul. The very akash of your higher self and the soul energy. An awakening that will last for the rest of your lifetimes because you make a decision today. That is how profound free choice is. The human can turn on a dime. Well, look at your history. Look what you've done in these last years. The government's fall that are inappropriate. The financial institutions fall that are inappropriate. And you ask, where is the change? <laughs> And it's all around you. And so you cannot ask, where is the change in my life either? Because it is all around you. Let the healings begin, even before the teaching, that you will leave differently than you came, stronger than you thought you could be in so many areas. Let the inappropriate habits, emotions all disappear because you sat here today, or you heard this today, or you read this today. That's the power of the human being. Free choice would seem to be a simple aspect, a concept where you choose. Free choice to a human being means you have free will to choose anything you want. But it isn't that way at all. You can only choose things you can conceive. <laughs> or that you think you can change. You cannot choose things that do not appear to you to be choosable. <laughs> For instance, rats in a maze have free choice. <laughs> they can go anywhere they want to. But one of the choices that never occurs to a rat or a mouse is to remove the matrix. <laughs> It's not in their consciousness. It is not their reality. They have walls before them and they can choose to go around this one or that one or go left or right in the maze. Cannot remove the maze. Humans live in a perception of a dimensionality much like an example of living in black and white instead of color. You might say humans have always had free choice in black and white. And if they are not aware of color, they're not going to choose red, do you understand? Or blue, or green. Imagine for a moment that those colors were a multi-dimensional reality. Therefore, the human being, although he has free choice, can't even conceive of the things that he cannot conceive of. So he doesn't choose a color because he doesn't know it exists. And that, dear ones, is what is changing. And so you're going to start to see concepts that never were. Free choice meaning human beings who choose things you never thought they'd choose. So I'm going to give you a little list of what to expect. And some of you will see these things quickly and some not for a while. 
So I give you an overview with no clock. And so when you say, well, dear Cryon, when are these things going to happen? I'll say, yes. <laughs> They're going to happen. For we see the potentials of all of them happening. Number one, spirituality. The systems of spiritual design on your planet are starting to change. And this is not telling you that certain ones are going to go away. They're simply going to change. Some of the largest spiritual systems, which you would call organized religion on the planet, are shifting. They're going to shift away from that which is authority on the outside to authority on the inside. A different way of worship. Changing the rules while keeping the doctrine the same. For the doctrine of the Christ has always been to find the God inside. Teachings were clear. The examples of the miracles were what humans could do not to set himself up for worship. And when that is then absorbed, the teaching of the Christ can remain the teaching of the Christ. It simply changes its form. You're going to lose a pope soon. I have no clock. Soon to us. And the one who replaces him may surprise you. Well, that particular organization will be in survival mode at that point in time. That is to say that fewer and fewer are interested in starting the priesthood. Fewer and fewer young people are in the organization. And the new pope will make changes. And that means that his organization will remain. It will remain with a more modern look at what truly is before you in a new energy. It is not the fall of the church. It is the recalibration of the divinity inside that would match the worship that goes on. It's a win-win situation. That is number one. Watch for this. A change in the way spiritual systems work. It's going to be more acceptable for you to have a system which is your own. <laughs> and that is good news to the ones who have a system which is their own. <laughs> Number two, against everything you think is human nature, human beings are going to start to react differently to drama. At the moment, Drama is attractive. You are seeing your media on its last gasp of reality giving you reality programs so you can watch drama as though you didn't have enough of it at home. <laughs> I want you to watch for this because there's going to be a shift in human nature. Eventually that's not going to be attractive at all. Not at all. There will come a time when you look backwards in time and you will see when you watched those particular kinds of shows and say, how barbaric was that? It's going to change. This means a shift in what human beings want to see as their entertainment. What they want to experience in their souls in their free time. There will be more of a motivation to the things which soothe their souls instead of the drama that mixes them up. They will not be fed anymore by what used to feed them in an old energy. If you turn on a television show that was produced in the 50s, how do you like it? <laughs> For it seems trite, does it not? Laughable in its innocence. And this is what you're going to see about what's on television today. An actual shift of how human beings react to drama. You're not going to be as interested in things 
that are dramatic. You're going to be more interested in things which are informative. And that's coming. And some of you will say, I doubt it. Because humans are humans. Some will even argue and they'll say, well, well, Kryon, most of humanity, you have said, are not old souls, so therefore they would have to shift along with us. I'll tell you this, there are some things that will be worldwide and there are going to be some things that are only old soul wide. You'll see. But the seeds are planted first with you. So what you feel and what you do eventually you'll see in the general population. How do you feel right now about what is on television? Old soul. <laughs> You're already objecting. You're already seeing the barbarism. You're already seeing those who have no integrity in their reporting and wish to scare you instead of inform you. And that is going to shift. That was number two. Here is one that is a review. We keep bringing it up because humans don't believe it. <laughs> if you're going to start living longer, there are those who are frightened that there will be overpopulation. You've seen the way it is so far. The geometric progression of mathematics is absolute and you cannot change it. And if you look at the population of the earth and how much it's shifted in the last two decades, it's frightening to you. What would change that progression? And the answer is a civilization on the planet that understands it. Instead of one who has been told to blindly simply have a lot of children for whatever reason and decides on their own to have fewer and sometimes none. Something that helps the planet and helps them. A human nature change where not every single woman looks at herself and says the clock is ticking but instead can appear to say I have been a mother 14 times in a row I'm gonna sit this one out <laughs> <laughs> who understands that there is no loss in this <laughs> now there's somebody who had to hear this right now right now I don't want to make you feel better dear because I know who's here not only in this room but who's reading and who's listening this time around, no children was exactly what you were supposed to do. And you thought perhaps you were barren or perhaps there was something wrong. And I will tell you, this was not in the cards. This is a vacation. <laughs> Smile and enjoy it. Needed it is in this lifetime for you. Appropriate it is. There's nothing wrong with you. There's no judgment. And those around you who would point the finger and say, You have failed the family, just relax. <laughs> For you haven't failed anything, especially God. You had to hear that, didn't you? That's the third thing. Humans will become smart. And we have said this before they'll figure out why the babies are being born. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be able to make free choice that is appropriate even within the, the establishment of organized religion therein appropriate and seen appropriate even by their Pope you see things are going to change <laughs> that says perhaps it would help the planet if you didn't have any watch for these changes and those of you who are steeped in the tradition of the doctrines would say that sounds outrageously impossible. <laughs> it will be for survival. And you'll do it. And so will the Pope. That was number three. The natural resources of the planet are finite. 
and it is not going to support a continuation of what you've been doing and we've said that for a decade. Watch for increased science but most of that increased funding for alternate ways of creating electricity finally which are at hand. Watch for the very companies who have the most to lose are the ones who fund it. It is the realization that that which is used to be taken out of the earth for energy can now be taken from the earth without wasting the resource. We talk yet again about geothermal, about tidal, about wind. And again we plead with you not to over engineer this. But this is one of the things that human beings are doing in a technological age. You over-engineer things. Your idea of capturing energy from tidal and wave motion is way too complicated. And you don't need to think that complex. Think paddle wheel on a pier <laughs> with waves. A paddle wheel which, which will create in both directions energy tied to a generator which can power dozens of neighborhoods. Think simple. And you'll be more inclined to have it sooner than later. For it won't cost as much. And the R&D won't cost hardly anything. We've told you that one of the natural resources of the planet which is going to shift and change and be mysterious to you is fresh water. It's going to be the next gold, dear ones. So we have also given you some hints and examples and again we plead even before the potentials learn how to desalinate water in real time without heat. It's there, it's doable, some already have it in the lab. And that will create fresh water for the planet. All you need is pipes. <laughs> and you already have them for oil. And you won't be using them for that. You see? Natural resources. There is a change of attitude that is starting to occur. Slowly you're starting to see it. And the only thing getting in the way of it, you would say, is big money. Hmm. That's starting to change as well. For the big money wants to then invest in what it knows is coming next. And that is a change of free choice. You're going to see decisions made in the boardroom that would have curled the toes <laughs> of two generations ago. Who thought it would be the worst thing to do and now it's the best. That, dear ones, is a change of free choice concept. When the thinkers there see options that they never thought were viable and suddenly not only viable, they are what should be done. That was number four. Number five, there will be those who think impossible the search for integrity and fairness in all things. In all things. In other words, human beings will not simply go with what they are told is the status quo. They will look at it and they will, they will say, well, I think it could be better. I'm going to look around for something that has more integrity and fairness. And there will be those who tell you, look, the institutions hold all the cards. And you have to do it their way. If you want things that my partner is giving me, you want health insurance, you want loans from the banks, you better do it their way. I have news for you. <laughs> I'll tell you where it's going. When a human being looks at that and says, well, that's not acceptable. What are you going to do? In the past, there was nothing. I'll tell you what, what is now going to occur. You're going you're gonna to pull out the maze. You're going to say, well, then I'll start my own institution. <laughs> and you will. And they will then start competing with an old energy. 
and they can't. In other words, there would be those who are young today who are going to start a new way of banking, a new way of health care, a new way of insurance. And when you see these plans, you'll say, why didn't we think of that? I can't tell you what they are because they haven't been thought of. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Let us say 20 years ago we have said there's going to be something called the internet on a device you don't really have yet. Called the computer that's going to sit on your desk. And this particular technology is going to be so available and so widespread you're going to have something you can't believe in. You're going to have a worldwide encyclopedia where you can look up things instantly and it's going to have a G word connected to it and it's not going to cost a penny. No matter how long you use it, to what depth you use it, anything is available in the world for free. And you would say, everything costs something, wouldn't you? And if that weren't enough, what if I tell you, you'll finally have the invention that allows you to look at somebody in another country on a little screen or a big screen and they can see you and you can have a real-time conversation and you'd say it's about time we have that invention we can believe in that and I'd say and it's going to be free and you're going no way that can't be free there has to be a way to pay for it well dear ones there is and it's outside of the box that anyone thought could ever work new concepts that allow freedom that never was there before. I give you metaphors for what is coming. Humans will search for integrity and fairness and it's going to happen in the places you never expect. I said this last week, it's a review. There'll come a time when you will demand this of your politics. Fairness. Integrity. And when they start calling each other names, you will turn your back on them and they won't get any votes. And they're going to get the point real fast. <laughs> How about that? And I will tell you something else, that this country that I sit in right now, in this place, will set the mold for that particular attribute eventually. I have no clock. Watch for the youngsters to set this in motion and they will for they are the voters of tomorrow and they do not want the energy of today. To some of them it's so abominable they won't even register to vote. You're going to see this soon. That was number five. Number six, I'll be brief. Watch for your news to change. It has to. When they realize that human beings are changing their watching habits, they're going to start changing what they produce for you to watch. Eventually there's going to be something called the Good News Channel and it will be very attractive and that's what those around their families at night who are eating will wish to watch they'll have something where the whole picture is shown and not just the drama, dramatic parts and you will hear about what's happening on the planet that no one is telling you now and when that occurs, we have no clock, dear one, that's going to occur. And when that occurs, it's going to compete strongly with the drama. I keep telling you this, human nature itself is starting to be in color instead of black and white. You watch for it. And that was number six. There's two more.
Very recently we gave you a, a prophecy, a prediction. We reiterate it now. Right now on the planet there's something in the works in your country that you should know of that is going to bring big pharma to its knees. Much like what happened to the tobacco industry where there was a realization of a lack of integrity of those who would produce a product that would kill people and you saw what you did with it. And it didn't take that long, did it? And we said not too long ago, and I repeat, that when you see an entire industry that for monetary reasons is willing to keep people from being cured and keep them sick, it's going to fall over. Sooner than later, you're going to see the rumblings of it very soon. And this is because not just the integrity is wrong, but the whole idea of what they do is backwards. You're going to start to see human beings look at their health in a different way. Do you know what the real answer to long-term health care is? Not only in this country, but the earth? I will give you a hint. Don't get sick. <laughs> and that, dear human beings, is what I'm going to tell you is at hand. An understanding of the body in a way you have not understood it before, which will feed its health instead of its demise. Your DNA is built to regenerate and last for hundreds of years in your body and you're here for a moment and you die. The research is there. The beginning of extended life is there. Human beings are going to search for things that are natural and processes that have always existed that will have an avenue of opening because of the demise of Big Pharma. And you'll wonder why you didn't know it before. I don't have a clock. I cannot tell you when. I can only guarantee you it is going to happen. It has to. You cannot have systems that are that large, that have no integrity, existing in a new energy for long. You understand? And then there are those who say, I hope it happens while I'm here. <laughs> oh, it will. <laughs> Maybe not who you are today. <laughs> You'll be here to see it also. You may be here to enjoy it at birth. And therefore you will, you will have a period of, of criticalness, the growing up, the adolescence where your DNA is not polluted <laughs> and where a consciousness of the planet is thinking at a higher level and where it works better and you live a long time these are the potentials of this planet and that was number seven and here's the last one For thousands of years, on this planet, human beings have warred with each other. And if you take a look at the reasons they warred with each other, you will quickly see there aren't any. <laughs> Land, resources, greed, those are not reasons. That is a description of old energy. Those are not reasons. Reasons would be perhaps defense, to keep them from taking over your life. And even they will go away when there's no aggressor. And here's what I want to tell you that we have said for 20 years or more.
When I appeared in my partner's life, I said to him privately, the first messages we're going to give are unbelievable. And that there will be laughter. That human nature and consciousness itself will change. That the seeds of peace will be planted and there will come a time when there is no more war. And the laughter was great because they look at human nature and they look at history and they say, impossible, there always has to be war. There always has been, therefore there will be. This is you in a box, in a black and white potential. You can only see what is and what has been and you have no idea the shades of color that are there in consciousness and the beauty of the love of God. And as humanity starts metaphorically to come into the rainbow colors, the choices you have are different. And you will look at one another and you will say, perhaps, perhaps, just perhaps, one country can live with another even though it has always been a renegade or always been the pariah or always been the difficult one. And maybe it is time to understand that they can have everything they wanted and yet have peace with their neighbor. It won't be about land anymore. It'll be about trade. It'll be about making things work. It'll be about unity instead of separation. North Korea is on the edge of this. And what did this require? the death of the old energy. And I want you to watch this take place. That the advisors of the young one are going to do their best to pull him back into an old energy. And this free choice of his will be far different for he sees some color. Watch for these things. They'll take longer than you want. It is the beginning of the beginning. You'll see the unification of South America sooner than not for what is going to take place this year in Venezuela. You'll see Iran changing. We have no clock. These are the potentials. These can change with free choice. These are not prophecies. I'll tell you, this is a reality shift, dear ones. And so number eight. <laughs> becomes this, to propensity, not to war again. This is what humans are going to want. This is what governments are going to want. There's a wisdom factor that starts to, to happen on the planet which is grander than what you think is possible. For when you look at government, what do you think? You see stupidity. You see non-function. You see dysfunction. And there is an axiom that says the more people that try to do something together, the worse it gets. That it all settles to the lowest common denominator. And I'm telling you, even those things are going to become old energy. Instead, you're going to watch the wisdom go to the top. Because there will be those who will see it for what it is and vote for it. I have no clock. I cannot tell you when. I can just tell you it is in the works. It is happening. And there will be the seeds of it for you to see. Right now. In every single of the eight categories I showed you. There are those who say, well, Crian, you're doing a lot more predictions than you used to. I want to tell you what's going on, dear one. I am not predicting anything. I'm just telling you what's there. That's what humans are doing on this planet. And you should breathe a sigh of relief and say it's about time. Now, I'm about to leave yet again. But not before this admonition. Seed planters, you have 18 years to plant these seeds where they will grow faster if you do it now than later. Your part to play is to have a higher consciousness in these areas at home. To show those around you what you know. To show them the love of God in your life by treating them as you would 
yourself. To be slow to anger and quick to forgive. To create a solace, a bubble around you, which is desirable. And people want to be with you for that. To be non-judgmental. These are the seeds that will change the crystalline grid of this planet and your children and their children are the ones who will inherit what you do today. This is about consciousness change. It's while you're here. It is why you're here. And this is the truth this day. And again I say it, it may pull backwards a bit before it moves forward and this is the way of things that always has been. But if you look at the last 50 years, you will see a tremendous change in human nature. Nothing compared to what you're going to see. What is acceptable and not acceptable today is going to shift greatly in the next two generations. It's happening. Everything you thought would be is starting to occur. I am Cryon. 22 years ago, my partner let me in his life. I knew it would take four years for him to get going, and it did. 18 years ago was when the alignment started. And that's when the work began. I am here because of what humanity did. Cryon has always been on the planet, but only in the last 18 were the messages profound about the shift. The grid group arrived and left in 2002 and the magnetics were set and human consciousness began to shift. This consciousness shift that you call 2012 has been in progress for far longer than you think and that is what gave us the ability to tell you what you were doing in a grander scope than you thought in a time frame that was longer than you wanted and now old soul you are here for this reason expect the young people to wake up old souls in young bodies are going to start to occur even in these meetings even listening to this far more than you imagine they're going to understand this is their time when you look into their eyes of the children of the grandchildren, I want to tell you, there's a, there's a lot of wisdom. A lot of wisdom there. And this is our message for today. Metaphorically, stand by for color. <laughs> and so it is.